Okay, this is uh, Skip Couch, uh, DirishTalk.com. Uh, we are located in uh, Clayton, New York, and uh, got a little, few biz uh, little bit of business to take care of first. Uh, uh, we got uh, Chris Bagley is uh, with us tonight. He's the owner of the Pirates Cove Scuba in Oklahoma City, and we're going to be talking to him in a few minutes. Uh, we have uh, some... Uh, Clayton Diving Club business to talk to talk about first. Uh, we have the uh, diver excess in the water, and it is usable. The uh, ladder, if it's not on yet, it will be in place before the weekend. Um, we have to change the uh, cables eventually and change them to ca uh, chain on the back side of it. And uh, I want to move the anchors out a little further uh, so we get a little bit more room on the on the deck and the uh, ramp isn't taking up so much room. Uh, but it is ready to go, and we also have a dive this Saturday at the Diver Excess, uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, hope all the divers that are around can make it. And uh, we also have a project for the village. Uh, they lost one of their anchors on one of their uh, buoys, and uh, we need to um, try to find it for them uh, uh, sometime in that... Uh, in the near future. Uh, so anyways, that's what uh, I had to uh, catch up on. Uh, Don uh, Bador, he made, he put the two rungs on the, added to the ladder, and uh, he charges the same as he charged last year, and it was zero. Uh, it was a donation. So that was uh, very good of him. Um, s now secondly, uh, we have the June dive coming up uh, on the Conestoga, and that's uh, run by uh, Joe, our treasurer, or no, he's our secretary, sorry about that. Uh, we'd like to have people sign up for that, and hopefully we have some people come down to the dive site on this Saturday. Uh, so, for right now, I guess we'll... We'll get a hold. Of, we'll start talking to Chris here. Um, now, do I just hit this Scott, his face, his thing, and yep. then just start talking right to him? We talk back and forth. Okay. There, Chris, you're on the air with uh, Divers Talk now. And there's, uh, I see that you run Pirates Cove Scuba in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, and you, uh, Dive trips, yeah, okay, that's good. Um, I I was stationed in Fort Sill back in '68, and only place I could find to dive over there was some quarries. Uh, we done some diving over in there. Um, is there any? Uh, do you go to the ocean and do a lot of diving, or you do the quarries around your area? Well, for our pleasure diving, we go to the ocean. For training, we do three different oh. lakes in Oklahoma. Are you able to hear me? Okay. Yes. I, yeah, you dive lakes in Oklahoma. I guess I call them, I probably call them uh, quarries. <laughs> well, there are, there Our are lakes some, are quite large over here. There are some quarries in Oklahoma we used to be able I don't to. Hear okay. to those are private go. property, so they've cut us out of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's probably where we're diving uh, over there. Uh, that was on private property, if I remember correctly. Um, they were quite interesting, but uh, nothing like what we have over here. We have lots of shipwrecks and uh, lots of uh, current, uh, good, good clear water, 
it, but I was stationed over there, so I didn't have any choice. I had to find some place to go diving. <laughs> there's a there's a nice little lake right there at Fort Sill called Elmer Thomas. Do you recall it? Uh, uh, no, I, I well, you know, 68, that was a long time ago. <laughs> and I don't recall a lot of things back in 60, 68, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's one of the three lakes that we actually dive in. So it's it's right there at Fort Sill. It's now located on Fort Sill property. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I know we didn't go too far. I'd say we went maybe, oh, 20 miles. Something like that, for away from the post, because our passes were only good for thirty, if I remember correctly. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. well, there, are, there are definitely some quarries in that we're area. We're doing artillery training. Yeah, we're doing artillery. That's artillery base, of course. That's what I was in for, is artillery. Uh, well, they still set the. Uh, well, we uh, we do we do an awful lot of. But he's, uh, he said something. I over talked on him, I guess. Uh, we we do a lot of uh, um, wreck diving up here. Uh, we have a lot of shipwrecks and uh, a lot of bottle spots. We do a lot of we find a lot of bottles. I got about three thousand bottle collection. So uh, you run your courses into the you go in the ocean. What part? Are you going to the Gulf? Uh, most of our pleasure diving, especially for uh, the advanced training, is done around Cozumel area. I love it down there. It's nice. Yeah, it's a good clear water and get all the depth we want. So makes it a little easier. We do a lot of tank right. training out there. Right. And and when you need to yeah. get, do you in, have any? Uh, uh, trips uh, scheduled? Okay. I just got back from one a week ago. Our next trip is scheduled uh, May 31st. We're doing one in the Bahamas. Oh, wow. You, is there openings in there for people to book with you? or? No, that one's full up. Where the reef station uh, for the state of Oklahoma Reef is the uh, nonprofit organization, you know, to help preserve our reefs and this is their annual trip for our, our lionfish uh, eradication project. So this is aboard the AquaCat. Oh, that the sounds... How many days is it for? Seven days. Seven days, yeah, yeah. That That's all... Uh, uh, you, you're away from shore the full time? Yes, it's... Uh, it's live aboard all the way. We we board the boat on a Saturday afternoon and return the following Saturday. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> well, if, if you've never done a live aboard before, they're great. <laughs> you eat, sleep, and dive. That's all you do. <laughs> you have a good you have a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can read a book or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good time. I can read a book at home. Yeah, we get get in about four dives during the day and then a night dive, so you can dive five dives a day, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, uh, do, you, do, you, what, do you have dive packages or... Um, Something in that, like say, if we wanted to come out with say a half a dozen people uh, to go diving with you out uh, on the liveaboard or whatever, would, would you have a package for that? Yes, we uh, we actually do about ten trips a year. Try to do one a month just for ten months. Ten trips, yeah. And we have people now that dive with us from yep. California, Arizona, Georgia, some out of New York, Chicago area. Uh, so yep. we get quite a few people that just, of course, most of these are destinations we're flying to, so they just meet us at the destination, and our groups normally range right. from about yeah. people. And twice out of the year, we try to do a very large trip. Our two trips this year, we we do Socorro Islands in uh, November. 
So that'll be our that'll be our big trip this year. It's the coral. We did uh, we did right. explore okay. uh, last October, which was a 11 day trip down the Sea of Cortez. That was a good one. Of course, all dive trips are good. Oh, it sounds really great. <laughs> you know, uh, do y'all do much traveling out of your area for diving? I'm sorry. I was, what to say? Do you, Repeat that, please. Do you do much traveling out to your area for diving, or most of it local? Uh, most of it's local. We we've traveled a lot in the past, uh, but now we kind of. I'm I'm almost seventy. I'm seventy in June, so I don't uh, go out of the area too much uh, for diving. I stay kind of local myself. But there's a lot of guys in the area that. Uh, that uh, do a lot. Uh, one guy uh, next year, he's going to uh, he's going to uh, Truck Lagoon uh, with a with a group, uh, and we're hoping to get some when he comes back to have some pictures for that. Maybe we can get him to talk on uh, on our dive talk. And, uh, that should be a good trip. Uh, our large trip next year in October 2015 is the Maldives. That's, that'd be good. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, do you do any cold water diving, or is it just all uh, diving in the south? No, I, I do some cold water diving. And, uh, of course, our lake's about nine months out of the year for cold water diving anyway. <laughs> so we uh, we do quite a bit of dry suit around here in the local diving. <laughs> yeah, dry suits are the only thing to have up here even. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> We have a lot of what we call ice diving. Uh, this year we didn't because the ice was uh, almost 40 inches thick and we figured it was just too much to cut. So we didn't have an ice dive this year, but we'll probably have one next year. Uh, I understand it gets pretty clear under the ice. You know, the settlement goes down quite a bit and you can visibility kicks up pretty decent. It depends on the snow cover. Uh, if the snow cover isn't too heavy, uh, where we can shovel off uh, from our hole, we put uh, what we call spiders, uh, spider legs, and we run out uh, several runs with a snowblower and then shovel it off and sweep it, actually, and you get a lot of penetration of light then. Uh, but if the snow gets too deep, it's, it's kind of dark down there, but uh, visibility is good with a light. But uh, other than that, uh, under the ice, it's, it's, it can be dark. This is not a lot of penetration of light. I'll have to try that one day. I kind of wanted to do the ice diving. I just hadn't got around to, to getting to it yet. <laughs> I've done probably about 40 of them, so it's not quite as much fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, the warm water. I, uh, I think I smartened up a little bit, you know. <laughs> I smartened up a little bit, I think, you yeah. know. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming y'all have last, a uh, uh, last uh, shut him off oh. no I, I'm sorry I, I think I was interrupting you oh well I don't know uh, that was is our archives up for the uh, ice dive that we showed on the yeah. yeah if you go into our archives later on uh, you'll see a old time show that we put on uh, it was an old photo uh, film of ice diving and some of our activities uh, and you could see some they don't have it we don't have any underwater pictures of it but uh, you can see we're cut the holes and uh, people jumping in the water and that was just with wetsuits we didn't have back then in the probably I think that was about in the late 60s probably is when we were doing that. And it was a little bit chilly, <laughs> but now everybody's got dry suits. <laughs> <clears throat> How thick a neoprene do you wear? Oh, was, sometimes I wear uh, two two uh, two jackets and two pants uh, with uh, neoprene. Uh, get about three quarters of an inch on as much as possible. <laughs> sometimes back then. Now, now we got dry suits, so it's not, it's, yeah, we just, <laughs> you have to put a lot of weight on, though. <laughs> yeah, 
I can imagine. <laughs> well, uh, what can we, uh, uh, what? He started talking. Uh, what uh, uh, certification do you offer in your uh, courses? We, uh, we offer all the recreational certifications, uh, and we we can all the way up to instructor level. On the tech side, we offer all the way up to advanced trimix. And we just started doing the side mount courses okay. also. Uh-huh. Is it national is it uh, national certified or is it uh, you know like um, Naui or yeah. We uh, the, the shop is a little bit unique. We offer Paddy, Naui, SDI, TDI, ERDI, and NASI. Sounds like you got it all covered. Well, pretty much all of it. <laughs> we don't have SSI covered, but we uh, we teach most every other agency. Yeah. Now, do you have any special events coming up this summer, like? Uh, uh, Picnics or trash? We do a lot. We do uh, trash cleanup for the local uh, village here uh, in the summer. Um, actually, in the fall, the third third week in uh, September. That's a national uh, cleanup day, I guess is what they call it. Um, do you do anything in that respect, or do you have any uh, picnics or? Yes, we. Uh, anytime we're at the lake, we try to do cookouts, which is about every other weekend. We also uh, participate in Patty's National Cleanup Day, so we we do a cleanup day at the lake. You know, they get prizes for whoever collects the most amount of trash, the heaviest bundles, the most amount of sacks, and also the cleanups are pretty fun. Uh, and we'll do a we'll do a cookout once or twice through the summertime here at the store on a Saturday. Just everybody comes in, hangs out, and cooks hamburgers and hot dogs and. Talks diving and has a good time. Um, how long have you been in your uh, business, your shop, and your present location? Even uh, store was established in this location in September two thousand and one, and we obtained it in September two thousand and five. So uh, I've. My partner and I have had it since September 2005 at this same location. What is it? Oh, good. Uh, what is the, your um, the lakes? What's the depth in your lakes and the clear the clarity of your visibility in your lakes that you dive? Now, are there any fish in there? Uh, we uh, have good fish life. Uh, Clarity has kind of always been an issue, visibility. Uh, one weekend we can have 20 feet at Lake 10 Killer, and the next weekend we can have two feet. And uh, our lake down south is Lake Murray. We get five to seven feet at Lake Murray. And Elmer Thomas, they're outside of Fort Seal. They're in Lawton. Visibility there can run 40 feet at times and down to zero at times. It, it can change quite a bit. We we actually uh, sometimes have to change lakes on our weekends to go to something that has visibility. So it we can we can have zero vis at times and cause yeah. us to change our complete lake destination. Uh, we uh we taken uh, in 1990 the zebra mussels uh, entered our system up here. And before that, we had very poor visibility. Uh, the zebra mussels cleared it up. Uh, now we get 50 feet sometimes. I mean, it's it's uh, excellent visibility here now. Uh, right now, I was just down on the river and uh, uh, today, and uh, we could see down about 30 to 40 feet uh, and see actually see bottom, which back before the zebra mussels, that was unheard of. You'd be lucky if you could see 10 feet. So we, we uh, right now, uh, used to be in 60 feet of water, you had to have lights, and uh, now you go down 130, and you don't even need any lights. So we have excellent visibility now so in the river and the lakes. 
That, that's, that's great. That's amazing. Uh, our, our lake here that we do our deep training in is about 130 foot deep. But to get that 130, you have to get out in the middle of the lake in the old riverbed channel. So what we have accessible is about 110 to 115. And at times that's zero vis. At times you might get five or six feet if you, you know, with lights. With, with good lights you can get some visibility. But we have one lake, uh, Beaver's Bend, that, well, we can get well over 130 foot, but it stays cold all year round. It's in the high 50s to mid 60s probably most of the year. So for recreational diving, unless you're dry suit or a lot of thick neoprene, it's not real pleasurable to most people. Well, it would get a lot of warm weather then, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's warm water to y'all, isn't it? <laughs> I know. Uh, our temperature is about 40. <laughs> yeah, our water is about 40 degrees right now, uh, but it does in the summertime get over 70 sometimes. Uh, which is not good. When you get that kind of temperature, it's 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 not as not as the visibility drops uh, a little bit, and uh, it's just I don't like it when it's that warm. Um, later on in the fall, it'll cool back down, and the tourists are gone. That's when our diving really gets in <laughs> after September after school starts back up because. <laughs> <laughs> now the. The zebra mussels, uh, have y'all been able to get rid of the zebra mussels? Because I understand that's a large problem about everywhere. Nah, there's, they're here to stay, unfortunately. Uh, they've kind of leveled off. Uh, I think that they've reached their peak, and they're just kind of leveled off now. So, uh, The problem with it is that they're, the weight of them is uh, on the wood shipwrecks, it is actually deteriorating the ships because of the weight of the zebra mussels. They get, I mean, feet thick. And oh. it, I, I hate them myself, but made the visibility good, and there's a lot of divers around now. But other than that, it's they're not good for anything. Well, I think we have them in our lake systems here, but... We don't have enough visibility yet to see them real good, <laughs> so uh, they claim that we have them. I guess being brought in on boats and transferred around from boat trailers and boats from one lake to the next, but so we do have an issue with them, but not near that bad. Yeah. Well, it's uh, you you get uh, if you don't have gloves on, you get your hands all cut up because they're very sharp. Uh, it it is altogether different diving. If you put your, if you happen to go on bottom with your suit, it'll it'll actually cut the suit. Uh, mm -hmm. Then things are so sharp, and they're no good as far as I'm concerned. But we've got them to live with. Uh, we live with them. Well, I didn't uh, I didn't realize you had those issues with the shells being so sharp. Yeah, you you you. You take go without gloves, and you have all kinds of cuts on your hands if you touch the rocks or, or you think you know, touch them. They just cut you bad. And very sharp. Can I ask if anybody in the chat room has questions? Uh, what? In there, uh, Ocean Diver and John from Key West. Yeah, we have quite a few people in our chat room, and uh, I'd like to know if anybody would like to ask uh, uh, Chris here a, a question on. Uh, Anything? Um, there's uh, quite a few people in there. Uh, maybe we'll get somebody to ask you some questions. Uh, Ken's in there. Ken's in there. He's asking anything? Or? Yeah, Ken, yeah. Uh, Ocean Diver, and John, and Key West. Uh, we, have some, we have somebody from Key West. We have an Ocean Diver in there. We have, uh, uh, that's just a couple that I've been told it's in there. Um, and I guess nobody's asking much. So, uh, what else would you like to talk about uh, about your business? Any, any more we can number and uh, website. Uh, number, yeah. I see you got a number up there. It's looks like it's four. Is that four zero five seven two two four four six five? Is it? That's correct. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Good eyes. Uh, <laughs> 
Well, I can, I can read it up there. Yeah. And then it's a www. Uh, uh, Pirates Cove Scuba dot com, I believe. Uh, yeah. Now we can see. You don't have to lean over. We can see you. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like the parrot up there myself. <laughs> that, uh, that was that parrot's cute. That was developed back in about October of of 2005 when we got the shop. the uh, The logo for the shop was a pirate, and and we didn't think that uh, depicted a very good family oriented dive shop. So we tried to come up with a different logo, and actually Rhonda drew the parrot. Just sitting here one evening, we was talking about it. And she scribbled out a parrot, and we put an Oklahoma dive flag by it, and that became it. <laughs> So it <laughs> just happened. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's... But our uh, what's his name? I, we don't have a name for the parrot. <laughs> what you got have a name for your parrot? Well, you have. We'll have to talk to uh, Rhonda about that. <laughs> Ken, Ken just asked in the chat room, does he do much diving on the Great Lakes? Though? Okay. Uh, Ken, he just asked, do you do a, do much diving on the Great Lakes, any of the Great Lakes? I've uh, I've never got to get diving in the Great Lakes. The reason I got into tech diving was we wanted to dive some of those wooden shit wrecks at the 200, 230, 40 foot range. And the partner I had in the shop at the time, which is now retired, he retired out about three years ago. By the time we got into teaching the tech and getting involved with it around here, we were staying so busy, we never got the opportunity to go north and dive the Great Lakes. And I still have it today. Uh, yeah, well, we have uh, the newest diveable shipwreck in the Great Lakes is the uh, Roy Jadre. It's just about four miles from, from here. Uh, maybe five miles, and it's uh, over 200 feet, lots of good current, uh, it's in the channel, it's a, it's a brand new, it's a freighter, she sunk in 74, 1974, uh, she's like a 700 foot long freighter with uh, a cell phone loader on it, uh, we have uh, one of our archives, of, I believe has some pictures of it, if you go back into the archives you'll see that, that would be, that's a good one. A lot of tech divers dive that. Um, and you almost have to be a tech diver to dive it. I mean, it's current and, and it's deep. Uh, we have the O'Connell. That's another one. That's at about 100 and, I think it's 140, 150 to it. And it goes down to over 200. Uh, and that one sunk in 18, I think it was 1890. I'm not date wise. I can't tell you exactly because I don't have my books. We wrote a bunch of books on these wrecks, and uh, that's uh, uh, it's all in there on on the in the books. Uh, but we have uh, all kinds of deep, good deep wrecks. Uh, the key storm starts in uh, 25 feet of water and it goes to 110. Uh, that's a steel hull freighter sunk in uh, uh, 1912. Uh, that starts in shallow, but it goes it goes deep. It's got a big prop on it and everything. It's kind of interesting. So there's there's the A Victory. That's a wood one. Uh, it starts at 65, goes to 130. Uh, on the, uh, below that is the channel and the mask are down in there. Um, crow's nest is down in there on the mask and what have you. It, it's quite interesting. And if you look through our archives, uh, some of the programs, you'll see all this stuff. Uh, at least some of it, anyways. Um, so, uh, but if you're ever you're ever up this way, give us a call and or give us a, drop us a line and uh, we'll set you set, set up something for you. Because you, I think you would probably get hooked and be up here a lot more. <laughs> I, I appreciate the invite. I, I do intend to get up there. It's on my bucket list, <laughs> but my bucket list is quite large, so I'm trying to get around all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, we've heard that uh, when we started researching those, oh, 2006 or seven in that area, we heard that those shipwrecks back from the 17 and 1800s are still fairly pristine as far as the fresh and the cold water. Uh, some of them preserved real well. So that was 
it's kind of what got us into into the tech diving to begin with. Is that's what we wanted to do was see those. So uh, I hope I make it because <laughs> yeah, we we got yeah. Uh, uh, they found from the Warby Hidalgo that was missing for so long. Yeah, they just uh, found the. Um, Ontario. The Ontario, that's a uh, 17, that was a that was 1770 or 1780. It sunk with all hands on board. Uh, they just found it here about two years. A friend of ours just found it, uh, I think about two or three years ago. Uh, cannon's still in place. Uh, anchor's still on her. She's in about 300 feet of water. <coughs> Excuse me. And... Uh, that's that's uh it's only about eighty or ninety footer, but she had like two hundred people on board. Yeah, I can't believe how many people they packed on these things, <laughs> and they've got some pretty good pictures of that. <laughs> and, uh, now, are they diving those? Yeah. Rogers are still open circuit. Uh, they're diving that with uh, uh, remote vehicle. Oh, that okay. one. That's all they did it with. Was a remote. They didn't. They didn't dive it the uh, uh, actual hands-on. They just used a an ROV. Okay. It, it, it got some pretty good pictures. That's what they were after. Uh, Water um, still fairly but, uh, clear. Our ships like the yeah oh yeah in that depth uh, no light but uh, with light you could see probably thirty feet. Oh, that's excellent. So, yeah, yeah. So that's with that's with lights with the uh, ROV. You can see, but there's no light pen, not much light penetration that depth. Yeah. So, but uh, we, uh, but uh, heck, uh, up here you go down on uh, any of these wrecks, and yeah, you might want to take a light if you want to go and do a little penetrating, but that's about it for the most part. But the visibility is pretty good, not bad at all. So, and I, I was sometime. I'm, I'm hoping to get out your way. I want to get into uh, back to Fort Sill and see what it looks like uh, since uh, I was stationed there. And uh, eventually, I'll get there maybe uh, if my wife will let me go for a few, few months. Cause I got a lot I want to do out through there. <laughs> I don't think she'll let me go right away though. <laughs> Now she's going, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> or go if I want She says she don't care. <laughs> and, uh, that base is quite glad to get rid of me for a while. <laughs> since, uh, since 68 and 70s, it's, of course, got modern. It's, uh, it's a pretty nice base. They still do, uh, they still do a lot of the shelling down there and setting off the the older ammunition, the older shells. So they're, you know, you can hear the bombs going off around there constantly. So it's uh, it's unique. And north of the base is the yeah. the National Wildlife uh, Forest. So it's a uh, it's a protected area. So there's some there's some some nice nice property around it. Nice protected park, national park. Uh, buffalo, a lot of wild elk and stuff like that. So you'll be surprised when you come back and see it. I imagine uh, the uh, barracks were uh, World War II barracks when I was there. <laughs> and the uh, wind would blow, and in the morning you'd have an inch of sand on the floor you had to clean up. Well, wind still blows in Oklahoma. Seems like that happened every morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, heck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I went out. Uh, I went out to the Indian site there and uh, seen uh, Geronimo's grave and what have you. That was kind of interesting. And the chief's burial ground, what have you. Uh, that was on the. I believe that's on the base. Yeah, that that is on the base. Yeah. See. Uh, yeah. You know, they, that's a museum now where they brought him back to and had him. Had him uh, incarcerated, so that's all. That's all uh, a, a tourist attraction now. So, so they open the base up. The base is oh, pretty easy to get back, out. Back when I was, well, you can get on a base without too much problem. Yes, uh, matter of fact, when we go to Elmer Thomas, the scuba diving, there's actually a recreational uh, RV park 
on the base side of Elmer Thomas. The the lake runs into the into the base and then it extends off the base. So you can there's two spots we dive from and one of them uh, is inside the base and so they don't give you any trouble. You can pretty much pass through it I guess unless we're on one of these high alert situations but I've never had an issue getting on the on, on the base to go to the lake. So it's uh it's it's pretty easy to get on and off uh, Fort Seal. Uh, we're we're right alongside uh, Fort Drum, and uh, we used to dive the uh, quarries up there. They had some pretty nice diving areas. They had one that has railroad tracks in it, and they were mining it and uh, iron mines, I guess, and what have you. And uh, it's totally closed. You you get on there, you just you can't. You you can't practically get on there. You have to have uh, a reason to be on the base for military reason, but they don't let you on there. It's gets sealed right up. Oh. Well, Fort Seal is a little bit more relaxed than that. So it's uh, like I said, it's if we're going on the base to the uh, recreational park or the RV park, there's one little guard shack there, and they usually just wave at you and let you go through. It's not even a stop and talk or tell them what your business is. And again, that's <laughs> that's usually on those conditions we wouldn't consider high alert or something like that. So. It's pretty relaxed. I, I guarantee you drive through one of these gates up here and they'll shoot you. <laughs> Wouldn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> now we uh, of course, yeah, they're they're uh, they're pretty tight. We've got Tinker Air Force Base here in Oklahoma City, actually Midwest City, and it's uh yeah, it's pretty secure. They uh they're about the same way there that have to have a purpose to get on the base. You have to go through all the ID and certain parts they'll tell you where you can go and where you can't go and so it's but we don't dive a tinker. So <laughs> we teach some classes out there at times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well well you know it, this has really uh been quite interesting and uh I hope we've uh got your uh shop out a little bit out in the internet here and uh, maybe you, uh, some people will get a hold of you. Oh, we appreciate and, uh, it. We've got next week we've got a, a diver from Malta that's going to be talking hmm. and uh, giving us some information on diving over in Malta. And it's a, that should be pretty interesting. Is your, is your program on every Wednesday? At, at seven o'clock every Wednesday seven o'clock okay yep yep it sure is I'll put that uh, we try to have somebody like you or or yeah great uh, we try to have somebody like you um, or you know we we got one guy uh, he's in Key West he calls himself a treasure diver we're trying to get him on and uh, we have the great what's the Great Lakes Aquarium yeah, we have. A, we were supposed to have a Great Lakes Aquarium coming on. We had the Shark Whisperer. Uh, we had a Shark Whisperer from Florida on uh, about uh, two weeks ago. She was on. That was pretty interesting. We had uh, who was the ones that made the uh, uh, video game? Oh yeah, West, um, Seattle the, there. Yeah, video game. Seattle, Washington. They made a scuba video game. We had them on and talking about their video game, and we've we've played the video game, and it's kind of it's it's different. And I gave them some suggestions because they didn't have a uh, um, a, uh, a a computer, you know, to, on the in the game, and they just had a air uh, your depth gauge and your uh, air supply, and that's all they gave you. But they didn't tell you how deep you're going to dive, and yet how do you plan to dive? You know, and yeah. it's kind of it was kind of fun. But uh, I, my son, he tried it two or three times. He didn't make it. He 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 died a couple of times in the game. But uh, I got I got back. Uh, I got on him. I got him back once. So. Oh, we got another guest on. Yeah, that's that's the one that we were. Okay. Uh, okay. This is uh. John? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, we have a guest right now. Okay. And uh, uh, listen to this, this uh, person. He does, uh, let's see, what does he do? He does uh, 
Oh, he's uh, teaching. He's he teaching. teaching to the injured, uh, uh, yeah, he's uh, teaching our uh, injured vets uh, and uh, people that's been burned. And uh, uh, let's see, he is oh, triple triple amputees taught. Wow, so that's pretty interesting. So we're going to go to him next, and I really enjoy talking to you. And maybe we'll see you up here diving sometime. Okay, thank you much, Rich. It's a pleasure. Appreciate it. Hey, have a good one. Thank How do you. we uh, move to this other guy? Okay, should be automatic. Okay, let's see here. Okay, John, uh, yeah. I'm on there. Am I on there? Okay, we got you. Good. Yes, okay. you are. I got you. Why is it bouncing back and forth from me to him? Oh, it does that. Okay. Okay, we were just talking to um, Chris. Uh, he was from Oklahoma City. He done scuba diving over. He does uh, a shop over. He has a shop over there, uh, Pirates Cove Scuba, and very interesting for talking with him. And uh, I see that you uh, do a lot of uh, with our vets and uh, help them uh, rehabilitate. I guess. Uh, I see you do a triple appetite. You've done a triple appetite. Boy, that must have been quite interesting to show him how to, or her, or whatever it was, a scuba dive. Well, that's what they call it, adaptive. We adapt the training for whatever they need. Uh, one leg, two legs, a leg and an arm. Whatever. Some would, uh, with a triple amputee, you actually need someone to help to propel them. But the rest of these guys are pretty well take care of themselves. And some of them have swimming prosthesis. When they're double amputees, be, uh, just below the knee, this prosthesis work quite well. Does it. <clears throat> yeah, what program are you doing it through? Are you doing it through the uh, vets? Uh, well, I'm doing it the same. Are you doing it just on your own uh, well, through we, your shop? Through my shop. Uh, we, we, we run a NAWI okay. adaptive program. Yep. NAWI's had adaptive since, well, 2005 is when we started, before they even built the Center for the Intrepid at the old Bam Brooks Army Military Center. Uh, the Center for the Intrepid was built, and uh, it gave us a lot more students at one time. Started small, now we train about 60 a year, and I've got nine instructors qualified to teach this program. And they all volunteer their time. We don't charge these kids anything for anything. Man, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, I don't even, you know, <laughs> that's just uh, uh, a great uh, project. Uh, for donations from uh, do you get donations? You have you have uh, set up where you get some donations from people. We get help from the uh, Red River Rats, which is a pilot organization that started during Vietnam. We get help from the Air Warriors, and we get help from disabled sports and disabled fire uh, war fighters, <clears throat> and uh, then of course uh, Angel Flight and uh, Veterans Airlift t helps us when we take these guys on trips. Right now we've got a group we're getting ready to go to Panama City, Florida. They'll fly them down. My instructors will drive down with all the gear. We'll dive them for three days at Panama City, and then uh, we'll drive back and we'll leave them a day to go through the Navy Scuba School, an experimental diving unit. They have to wait 24 hours to fly anyway, and then they'll fly back. We do that two or three times a year. But uh, with all the money, what I do, I control the. Do you ever come up? Pardon? I was just going to say, do you ever come up north? Uh, up in this area. This is the St. Lawrence River area, New York. I have, I'm have. i from Massachusetts, but I had very little diving up there. I've dove over most of the world. Uh, I've been diving a long time, uh, actually since 57. <laughs> and uh, we do a lot of travel, too. We, uh, some of these guys, we get a lot of help from a lot of people. Uh, we don't directly take donations. Uh, the training I take care of. But on the trips, we get help with the rooms, we get help with the diving, we get help with the food, we get help with the transportation. Uh, while we're down there, the Navy Flying Wing at the Navy base, so it's a big barbecue for these guys. Uh, there's a lot of people helping out. That's a, that's that's uh, great. Uh, you said you started in '57. Well, you got two years on me. I started in '59. So. So you're almost as old as me. <laughs> 
I'll be 70 in June. I'll be 75 in October. Yeah, you got a couple years on me. <laughs> I still like it. I still enjoy it. I, but, uh, uh, this is this is. Diving. Oh gosh, yeah. I I don't know what I'd do if it wasn't for uh, for doing something with, with diving. Uh, we just uh, got our diver access up here in the water, and uh, they they have um, it's Fort Drum uh, is our local area here, and they uh, have a uh, training session for the wounded warriors, uh, and they do it out of Syracuse, and they come up here, uh, they bring them up here, and they dive quite a lot. So we have it so it's set up uh, actually for your wheelchair right down on our diver access if necessary. Yeah, there's so, a lot of people out there. Uh, uh, somewhat uh, set up for handicap. Yeah, there's different organizations. There's the Die Pirates, uh, which is supported by SSI. There's SUDS, which is a uh, SDI course primarily. And so uh, there's an awful lot of people out there. And, and there's Die, die Pirate. I forgot there's another organization too. So we're not the only ones doing it. Uh, we probably train more than anybody else. We do about 60 a year. But we've got the Center for the Intrepid, so we've got a large group of amputees here all the time. Yeah, that must be uh, that must be very interesting how how you uh, adapt uh, equipment so it works for them. Uh, it must it's uh, to me. It, it, I mean, I got all my limbs, so I, I don't know how you do it. You know, it's just as you said, it's adapting equipment. And the people, I, <clears throat> these young kids do it every ask of them. Uh, for example, if their hands are too burned to really hold something, they find out they can actually push the inflator against the side of their head and inflate the BCD that way. Uh, there's just <laughs> a lot of different things. Uh, we've a lot of it was trial and error as we started, but it's pretty. We're pretty well stabilized now, so it doesn't matter what they've got. We can usually take care of it. The only thing we can't take care of is if someone has a yeah, serious ear injury and it just won't allow them to equalize. Now, do you where do you take them diving when you go south? Uh, the Keys, or we go to Panama City, Florida. We go to South Padre Island, and uh, we send some guys. To, some guys go to Guantanamo with different groups. Uh, some go with Suds to Puerto Rico. Uh, some go to Bonaire. The groups we take, we usually take to Panama City, Florida. Uh, we've been going there in the summertime for now for about five, five or six years. Uh, that's. Uh it's just fascinating. Uh, it's too bad, unfortunately, that this has to have a have a, this happening like this. But at least somebody is helping them, and that's that's important. Yeah, I'm hoping to run out of customers. <laughs> I really want to run out of people to train. Uh, that's what yeah. I might look for. But right now, I've even got one-legged yeah. instructors. So uh, what I've got now is I've got uh, adaptive teaching, adaptive. <laughs> We'll train them up to instructor. However far they want to go, we'll train them. Uh, we've got uh, two more disabled uh, in training right now. They should finish up sometime this summer. That's just uh, real interesting. Now, we got quite a few people on, and uh, I was wondering if anybody wants to ask any questions uh, to uh, uh, what is it, John, right? Yeah, to John. Uh, if if so, uh, let's get your questions in. Um, I uh, get a plug for your scuba shop. Uh, you you have a scuba shop of your own that you run a business out of, or is it just? Uh, you, no, I I, you know, opened, I have a business. I opened it up when I retired from the military after thirty four years. I opened the scuba diving business in ninety one, and uh, we're uh -huh. still there. Where's and, the, and now where's Universal City, right outside of uh, San Antonio, geez. Texas. Oh yeah, I got it right here. Yep, yep. Okay, I got it right here. Yeah. Lukens Dive in Universal City. Yep. Yeah. Owner. Yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, uh. Do you ever have any uh, like uh, movies of their uh, their process uh? Yeah, As they're diving a, or anything like this? Uh, do you ever oh, take yes. movies of that? We've got a videographer, uh, George Cummings, uh, videos every class. So everybody at the end of the class gets a CD of pictures and a DVD of their training 
for every class. We go on trips, again, the same thing. They get a DVD and pictures. So uh, if he, George says it all. He volunteers his time. He goes with this with every class. That's great. I mean, that's just fantastic. I, I, I just, I'm, I, I'm overwhelmed, I think, with it. It, it really is. Uh, has anybody asked any questions yet, Scott? Or, no. no. I think everybody else on the thing is on the uh, our broadcast is uh, overwhelmed because of the uh, uh, complexity of the project that you do. Uh, I, I applaud you for doing something like this. Uh, it it must be kind of strenuous, but it must be rewarding as heck too. It's pretty rewarding. Uh, as I said, all my instructors volunteer the time, and most of my instructors are disabled vets, uh, but they've got all their limbs. Uh, having a limb, of course, as you know, makes it a lot easier to dive. But these guys adapt to it. If they get no legs at all and they're above the knee, we, we get these uh, dark skin gloves and give them gloves to swim with. Uh, later on, when they're better, there's diver propulsive vehicles. But they get a lot of support now from everybody. The, uh, the civilian community has really taken the military to heart during this program, a lot different than after Vietnam. Yeah, right. I agree with that. Is there a uh, what pro application, process? application process that they have to go through, or is it just they just walk or come in and say, "Hey, I want to dive." We'll train it. Anyway. We actually have them sign up at the Center for the Intrepid because they have to get a doctor's clearance to dive. Okay. And we just set a class up, time up. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, yeah. And they set it up. They, they get the names in that there. They prove them to dive. And we just uh, have them come by the shop, fit them for gear, and we, we do it. We give uh, uh, we don't care how many, you know. As long as they say they can dive, we take them. Yeah. yeah as long as they got the doctors, doctors right. okay, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now do these, uh, some of these, uh, trainees that you've trained, uh, do they go on with uh, the actual s sport scuba diving and go out on their own later? Or about, about have you found people that they continue? About 25% get really get into it. The others dive on occasion when it's available. But we get about 25% that turn into hardcore divers. And they go with us, they go with other groups, they go, they go diving on their own. Uh, some of them have gone to Puerto Rico and different places on their own just to dive. And some of them have gone to instructors. So about 25%, which is a, really a pretty good group, a pretty good li limit, because a lot of them have other skills, they're doing other things. Some of them are going to school. But about 25% stay with the program. And we offer diving anytime they want to go. Well, yeah, well, the uh, uh, normal classes that uh, with normal uh you know, people that aren't injured, uh, that's higher percentage than the uh, than the ones that they normally train. Uh, it's only 2 or 3% that stick with it. You get a very, very low amount uh, in a regular course, at least up in this area anyways. Yeah, we've been lucky in that uh, we've had a fairly large number stay with the diving, but we offer a lot of dives. Uh, we have dives every Thursday night, every Sunday. We have uh, we do an awful lot of travel. We tr probably more travel than all the dive shops in this area put together. Uh, some of it's local, some of it's yep. other places in the states, some of it's exotic, like Egypt or uh, Pembilo, North Zanzibar, or Indonesia or New Guinea, uh, Philippines. Uh, so we have tours as simple as Cozumel or South Texas, and as complicated as Galapagos. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's nice. Uh, we have a lot of. Uh, Shipwrecks up here that they dive, uh, that people dive. Uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's just amazing that they uh, uh, that somebody's doing this and getting that much response from the uh, from the uh, injured warriors. Uh, I'm just I'm amazed that it's that popular with them. I suppose it it probably is good exercise for them. Well, the burn victims say they have no pain down there. But I don't know whether there's pressure or they'll drop the temperature of the water. A lot of the other people say their pain doesn't bother them as much when they're down there as uh, with any other time. And these are young guys, young people, and uh, they do a lot. They even run triathlons where you and I would change bathing suits and shorts. And they change legs. 
one leg for swimming, another leg for pedaling a bike, and a third leg for running. And so they even do triathlons. Uh, they're a lot more adventurous, <laughs> it seems like, than a lot of people are. Yeah. Oops. I just. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's uh, uh, that's good. Uh, yeah. They we change our shorts. They change their legs. I, I like that. That's that's a good. That's that's a good one. That is. <laughs> uh, I suppose I suppose that uh, they probably can't uh, use the fins and running very well anyways so they have to put on some boots or shoes or sneakers or whatever I guess. Yeah and it's a shorter leg with a foot that is straightened out for swimming you know and it's just so different. We just had not ours, some of my guys went into it but we just had a group of these uh, amputees climb Mount Kilimanjaro and with the snow and all I mean as I said they're pretty adventurous. <laughs> I guess I wouldn't even consider it right now, or I wouldn't have considered it 30 years ago. So yeah. I would climb the line. mountains. <clears throat> and then they even get snowed on the last day, which is really bad. But uh, as I said, there's so much civilians. Uh, well, the, one thing, if they don't have... Yeah. Pardon? I say one thing is, but like they're up there in the freezing cold and everything, so the the legs that they don't have, the arm they don't have, it doesn't worry about getting cold, does it? Yeah, don't worry about frostbite. <laughs> but uh, as I said, yeah. you, you can try almost anything you ask them to do. Uh, uh, they'll give it a try. They're actually, my yeah. instructors feel they're easier to teach than the average person off the street. Is that right? Wow. Huh. That's, that's, uh, that's very. This is very interesting. Uh, uh, we're unfortunately going to have to wrap up now. Uh, if you'd like to get in any, uh, you've got any email addresses or phone numbers that you'd like to put up uh, for your shop, uh, we'd be glad to let you uh, well, get my, it up so that maybe somebody will get a hold of you. My sh shop uh, website is uh, dugandiving.com, and our, our main email address is dugandiving at yahoo.com. And that pretty okay, well, you good, know, takes you. Good. Uh, but we'd be glad yeah, to help. If anyone wants uh, to start a program, well, good we'd luck be happy with... to help them out. Okay, I'll remember that. Uh, and uh, I'm glad you come on our show. And uh, we are on every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, the diverstalk.com. And uh, maybe you could uh, check in with us next week. And uh, we're going to have, uh, what was it again? Okay, we're going to have uh, divers from uh, Malta talking uh, about what they do over there uh, and what kind of diving they have. <coughs> yeah, I dove in Malta. Uh, so that should be kind of interesting. It will be because I dove there in '64 when I was stationed in Libya. We used to fly up there, but uh, it'll be interesting. Yes, I think I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be definitely be watching it. Yeah. Wonderful. You might be want to ask him some questions. You probably got some questions you can uh, uh, ask him about. Uh, that we wouldn't know, you know. <laughs> yeah, what I remember mostly That'd in '64 was really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably really expensive now. <laughs> probably. It was. I mean, it was. You can't believe how yeah. cheap it was. a mixed drink was like twelve cents. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> that's that's going back a few years. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Now it's probably four or five bucks. At least. <laughs> well, it was nice talking to you, and uh, good luck on your uh, venture. Okay, thank you very much. You take and care. And I hope you have good luck. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you too. Uh, this is uh, Skip Couch on DiversTalk.com. Com. Uh, we will uh, sign off, and we'll be seeing you all next week, uh, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on DiversTalk.com. Stop.